um, let's do components of an AC circuit. Component of an AC circuit. Components of an AC circuit. There are three major components of an AC circuit. There are three major components of an AC circuit. Which includes resistors, capacitors, and inductors. There are three major components of an AC circuit. Which includes resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Resistors, let's explain them one after the other. Start with resistors. A resistor is used to measure the resistance of an electric circuit. A resistor is used to measure the resistance of an electrical circuit. Of an electrical circuit. Resistance is simply resistance is simply yeah, resistance. resistance is simply the opposition to the flow of electric current. Resistance is simply the opposition to the flow of electrical current in a circuit. The extra unit for resistance is ohms. The extra unit of resistance is ohms. That's the same thing. This is called omega, right? It's called omega. The extra unit for resistance is ohms. So I have omega as your symbol. Okay, let's proceed. Next up, look at something very familiar. Um, I think we still need it. Let's look at Ohm's law. Um, Ohm's law also needed for this. Ohm's law. What's Ohm's law? Or what, what does it say? Ohm's law states that. States that. The current flowing through, or you can say passing through, the current passing through an or passing through a metallic conductor is directly proportional. The current passing through a metallic conductor or an electrical circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference is directly proportional to the potential difference across its terminal the current passing through a metallic conductor or an electrical circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference across its terminals are we there Alright, so that's like the um, basic idea about Ohm's law. So look up it. Look up it. Alright, so um, of course, as you are aware, current is R. Um, potential difference sometimes is used interchangeably with your voltage. That's V. Alright? So from Ohm's law, you're saying that V is directly proportional to what there? R. Right? The current is directly proportional to the voltage or the potential difference. 
when it comes to science, for, for science then, if I have a proportionality sign, what do you do? Huh? All right, so if I'm having a proportionality sign like this there, there are two ways to eliminate this. Your first task is to take this up, put an equal to, and then next up, use what there? A constant. All right, the constant in this case is R, which is your resistance. Okay, so if I multiply this now, I have the word there, V is equal to I, R. I think this is a required equation for Ohm's law. That V is equal to I, R. So having this, so V is equal to I, R. We are V. Where V is equal to V is equal to voltage, right? So V is voltage or potential difference, as I'm calling it. I'm calling it voltage, so we call it potential difference. So um, I is current, current in amperes. Um, Amper is actually A. Okay. Amper A. Voltage volts V. And then R is called to resistance A ohms. Sorry. And that's this. Alright, so I have this. Resistance nodes. Right, so it's like the concept there. This is called res arrangement of resistance. It's called arrangement of resistance. Arrangement of resistance. Resistors can be arranged in two ways. Resistors can be arranged in two ways. Number one, series arrangement. Number one, series arrangement. Number two, parallel arrangement. Alright, two ways. Number one, series arrangement. Number two, parallel arrangement of resistors. Let's explain this. But one series arrangement. One series arrangement. This is the end to end N hyphen to hyphen N. This is the end to end arrangement of resistors. This is the end-to-end -end arrangement of resistors as shown below. This is the end-to-end. -end. So this is like um, your major defining text when it comes to defining series arrangement. The, the key word there is end-to-end. -end. So this is the end-to-end -end arrangement of resistors as shown below. As shown below. Now please note please. The second symbol for the resistor is this. You can note from that. The, se the second symbol for a resistor is this one here. Or The second symbol of a resistor is that this one here or this. So, so this is the second symbol for a resistor. It's something called a real start. Real start. Right, it's called a real start or variable resistor. For that one, just put this like this. It's called a real start or variable resistor. Right. By the way. Okay, so we're looking at series arrangement of resistors. We said it's the end to end arrangement of resistors as shown below. So here's what your diagram looks like this um, is weight, 
this this way and then this this way or right. so let's say I have this as R1 R2 R3 is equal to resistors in series. So look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. So I'm having my first resistor here. These are the ends of the resistors. Here and here, they are my ends of this resistor here. This one too. You can see the ends here, right? So look at this now. R1 or my first resistor here, at this point, this is an end, this is an end. So the end of the first resistor is attached to the end of the second resistor. That's why we call it an end-to-end -end connection. That's why we get the mission point. This is called resistors in series. Alright, so then let's proceed. For resistors arranged in series, For resistors arranged in series, the equivalent re resistance R is equal to. For resistors arranged in series, the equivalent at re the equivalent resistance R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. That's all. R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Alright. So we just mentioned we just mentioned equivalent resistance. What's an equivalent resistance? Definition An equivalent resistance is that single resistance. I can use the word resistor if you want to, I use it interchangeably. An equivalent resistance is that single resistance that will have the same effect, that will have the same effect as two or more resistors acting together. A single resist um, tanks that will have the same effect as two or more resistance acting together. That's like the definition for equivalent resistance. So here's the here's the simple idea. If I'm giving resistors arranged in series, the max will find the equivalent. Simply do what they sum up their values, that's all. Right? Simply sum up their values, that's all. Example. Example. Example, five resistors, example, five resistors of resistances, five resistors of resistances five resistors of resistances 2 ohms, 3 ohms, 1.8 ohms, 2.6 ohms, and 15.2 ohms are arranged in series. Are arranged in series. Are arranged in series. What is their equivalent resistance? Are arranged in series. What is their equivalent resistance? So when you ask to find equivalent resistance, what do you do? Simply look at for the pattern of arrangement. If it's in series, simply do what there, sum of their values. That's all. So the solution for this now, my equivalent resistance R will be equal to just add up these values. Because what there? 2 plus 3 plus 1.8 plus 2.6 plus 15.2. Sum this up. What do you get? That's six, huh? 24.61 24 there. Ohms. And that's all. That's all. 24.6. That's you. And so that's all.
Correct, number two. Let's look at parallel arrangement of resistor. Parallel arrangement of resistor. This is the side by side arrangement of resistors as shown below. This is the side by side arrangement of resistors as shown below. This is the side by side arrangement of resistors as shown below. Arrangement of resistors as shown below. So having this, all right. So I have R one, R two, and R three. So note your keywords. When it comes to series arrangement, there your keywords there is end to end. When it comes to parallel arrangement, there your keyword is what there side by side. That's like the keyword there. All right. Are we done? For parallel arrangement of resistors, for parallel arrangement of resistors, the equivalent resistance is given by 1 over R being equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Then it continues, okay? So since I have three resistors here, R1, R2, R3, I'm using this. So please note the difference between series and parallel. For series arrangement, I'm simply using R being equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. For parallel, Right. For parallel arrangements, I have that the inverse of the the, uh, the what equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the inverse of each of the resistors, and that's the concept there. Right. Example one. All right. Example two resistors. Example two resistors of resistance. Two resistors of resistance. 2 ohms and 3 ohms. 2 resistors of resistance or resistances. 2 resistors of resistances. 2 ohms and 3 ohms respectively. Respectively. Are arranged in parallel. Are arranged in parallel. What is their equivalent resistance? What is their equivalent resistance? What is their equivalent resistance? Okay, so of course for this case now, it, it, it's now a parallel arrangement of resistors. So I'm having two of this. I'll call R1 to be equal to 2 ohms and for R2 to be equal to 3 ohms. If I'm going to get the equivalent for parallel arrangement, we said 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus ETC. But since I have two resistors, I'll just use R1 and R2. What this what do we get? We have 1 over R is equal to 1 all over R1 is 2 plus. 1 all over R2 is 3 and others. Of course, this becomes a problem of fractions. We should really be a problem here. Okay? Simply take your um, LCM, LCM of 2 and 3. Obviously, it's 6, right? 6 over 2 is 3 times 1, that's 3. Plus 6 over 3 is 2 times 1, that's 2. This is now equal to 5 all of the 6. So I have 1 over R1 is 
equal to 5 over 6. Please mind you, this is not an answer. We have to find the equivalent resistance, not the inverse of the equivalent. So at this point, now what do I do now? I'll simply invert. Invert from here now. I want to get R, not one by R. What do you know now? Turn this upside down. So I have R over 1 is equal to turn this upside down. Because we're there, 6 all over 5. So it means that, of course, R over 1 is R, right? You see what's there? 6 all over 5. What means I want to get it now? 1.2 gives you 1.2 ohms. Alright, that's the equivalent. Um, resistance 1.2 ohms. Right, so that's how we work on this. Case. All right, so note, let me add up this one here. Yeah? This, this is not really part of this topic, but since we are talking about this stuff, let me just add this one up. So, note something, note something. Note, the resistance of a metallic conductor, the resistance of a metallic conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. The resistance of a metallic conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor in bracket L in bracket L and inversely proportional and inversely proportional to its area and inversely proportional to its area in bracket E right inversely proportional to its area in bracket um, E. So look at it. From here we'll get the formula here. So mathematically mathematically we're saying this we're saying that resist uh, the resistance R is what there eh? directly what is direct proportionality there eh? to its length and also R is what there eh? Inversely proportional to this area, okay? This inverse proportionality, what about this? If I combine these two now, it means that R is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. At the same time, this same R is inversely proportional to what the area. So combine this to form an equation, I'll have that. R is equal to L times 1, sorry, is directly proportional to L times 1 is L all over A. Right. So R is directly proportional to L over A. Have this. So sorry, this one we said the first one. You said when you come, when you have an, when you have something like this that involves um, a proportionality sign, then what do you do then? Change this mass to equal to and uh, introduce a constant. In this case, I have that R is equal to my constant here is called rho. Gives you rho L over A. The constant here is called rho. So this is called rho. It's a Greek symbol called rho. So from here, right, this R is equal to change to equal to the constant. R is equal to rho L all over A. Rho L all over A. We are this. We are, let's define the terms. We are. R, we said it's resistance. R is resistance in ohms. Um, this is called rho. It's called kick. Um, this is actually called resistivity. Resistivity. What will be your unit for resistivity? How do you get the unit for this one? So if I make this up to the formula here, A comes with this. I have R A divided by length. Alright? This R is called resistance in both. Area in meters square. Length in meters. This will cancel this. I'm having meters. So it's called resistivity. The SI becomes O meter. 
concept called ohm meter. That's what it is. L is length, length measured in meters, and then A is equal to area. Of course, area is measured in meters squared. So please take a look at it. That R is equal to resistivity times length all over area. Right? So look this. Why this is quite simple? So look up. Look up. If I'm giving a conductor, you're giving its resistivity, the length, and then the area. You have to find resistance. It's easy. Multiply the resistivity by the length all over what eh? the area. Now this question can be twisted in some ways, alright? In some cases, instead of giving you resistivity, they will give something called conductivity. Right. Instead of giving you resistivity, they will give you conductivity. So if I'm giving conductivity and I have to find resistivity, what do I do? Note something. Note. Note that resistivity is equal to the inverse of conductivity. So I'm saying that rho is equal to 1 all over k. So if you're giving conductivity, and then you have to find resistivity, what do you do now? Take the inverse of the value of conductivity, you get resistivity. That's my concept there. Right. Important for you to also note this one too. Please, let's finish learning. We'll look at past questions from our last class and, and this one. We we'll combine them together. All right, I have a past question, but let's finish learning first. All right, that's one thing to note. The next thing to note is this. There is no... Okay, in some questions, you'll be given the value of the area. 2 meters square, 3 meters square, 15 meters square, etc. In some questions, you will not be given the area. You'll be given dimensions and being asked to find the area. For instance, if they tell you, they say, um, let's start with this. For a square, what's your area of a square? Huh? Of course, your voice is high. Alright, let's note these things. Of course, a square has equal sides. Abi? For equal sides. For a, for a square, what's the area? That's length times what? Length. That's what there. Square length. For a rectangle, for a rectangle, what's your area there? Length times breadth. I think so, there. MD. For a circle, what's the area there? High and square. For a sphere, what's the area? Four pi r square, okay? But don't worry, we'll ask that one. Focus more on this thing, right? Square, rectangle, and circle. So if you say a circular, listen, listen, listen. If they say a circular conductor of radius something, if you give the radius there, what does it mean? It means they don't mean the area straight. So what do you do now? You just get the area first before solving. Alright, let's take an example. Let me see what I mean. Let's take an example. Let's take an example. A metallic conductor, okay, hold on, hold on, let's improvise. A rectangular metallic conductor, a rectangular metallic conductor, a rectangular metallic conductor of length, of length, 150 cm, of length, 150 cm and breadth 70 cm metallic conductor of length 150 cm and breadth um, 70 cm has a resistivity has a resistivity of 2.67 
1 ohm meter has a resistivity of 2.671 ohm meter. What is the resistance? What is the resistance offered by what is the resistance offered by the metallic conductor? What is the resistance offered by the metallic conductor? Well, let's get this done. So, of course, recall your formula. Recall that, uh, what do you call it? The resistance is equal to rho L all over A. Now, look at this case. First of all, for this case, am I converting? Am I converting? Oh, what? I'm converting, of course. This is in CL. This is in CL. This is in meters. So, you can't work with it that way. Convert. If I'm to convert from CN to meters, what do I do? My multiplying, my dividing, my adding, my subtracting. Convert from CN to meters, what do I do? Huh? Divide by how many? I'm dividing by 100. Alright. Divided by 100, what do you get it now? 1.5. Divided by 1, what do you get there? 0.7 meters. Right. Please convert from cm to meters. Divide by 100. If I get this now, see, to get the resistance, I must multiply resistivity with length all over area. If I look at this now, I have a value for resistivity, I have a value for length, but there's no value for area. My task now be to find the area. When it comes to finding area, I will mind the type of conductor. If it's a square conductor, what do I do there? Multiply the length twice. That's L squared. You get the area. If it's a rectangular conductor, multiply the length by breadth. For a circular conductor, what do you do now? Take pi L squared. Now, what if they give you diameter? How do you get, if I'm giving diameter instead, how do I get, let's say I'm giving a circular conductor, and I'm giving diameter. What would be your formula using diameter? The relationship between diameter and radius is this. The radius is equal to what there? Half of the diameter. Please, that's, that, that's what you do, okay? So you can simply divide the diameter by 2. You get radius. This is this value now. You square it. And that's it. Alright? The pi of the square. So if I'm giving, if I'm not giving radius instead, I'm giving diameter. The idea is divide the part of the diameter by 2 first. And then take your power square. In this case, I'm giving a rectangular conductor. So for a rectangular conductor now, it becomes length and breadth. So, but area is equal to length times breadth. That's now equal to the length here is what? 1.5 times breadth here is what? 0 0.7. Please call. What do you get? 1.05. What's the unit? Meter, meter square for area. 1.05 meter square. So hence, the resistance is now equal to the same rho. Rho is this 2.671 times L. Length is this one here. 1 1.5 all over the area. 1.05. Please give me value. First of all, watch this times this equal to get your answer then divided by 1.05 what do you get? what do you get? sorry? 3.816 this? what's a unit? for resistance, what's a unit? oh so that's your answer this is how you work on this Alright, so we just looked at the first component, that's resistors. Let's look at the second component there, capacitors. Look at the second component, capacitors. Look at the second component there, capacitors. 
a capacitor is a device used in storing electrical charges. A capacitor is a device used for storing electrical charges in brackets or electrical current, whichever one, right? Using storing electrical charges. You can say electrical current. You can say electricity. Whichever one is correct. Are we there? The unit for a capacitor is farad. Okay, the unit for the capacitance of a capacitor is farad. The unit for the capacitance of a capacitor is farad. Mathematically, mathematically, the capacitance, mathematically, the capacitance of a capacitor is the ratio of the charge the ratio of the charge to the potential difference the ratio of the charge on the capacitor to the potential difference across its terminal right that's like a definition of capacitance capacitance is simply the ratio of the charge of the capacitor charge is q to the potential difference across its terminal so we are saying capacitance c is equal to Q over V. Right? So the capacitor is the ratio of the charge on the capacitor to the potential difference across its terminal. Charge to the potential difference across its terminal. So C is equal to Q over V. Yeah? C is equal to Q over V. You can use small Q if you want to, right? I use small cube on the chart if you want to. Right? Is it correct? I use small cube. So some authors prefer to use small cube. So I use capital Q, whichever way. Um, it's still the same thing, right? Alright, let's proceed this. The second symbol for a capacitor is the second symbol for a capacitor is the second symbol for a capacitor is this. This is a capacitor. This is a capacitor. So please note the difference between a capacitor and a cell or a battery. For a battery, the second symbol is this. Almost the same thing. Just that for a battery, one is longer than the other one there. This is a battery or a cell. But when the height of these two are the same, because of them, a capacitor. So both this case. Right, so I think this is it. Um, let's now look at the arrangements. Arrangements of capacitor. Look at the arrangement of capacitors. How capacitors are arranged? Arrangement of capacitor. Capacitors are arranged in two ways. Capacitors are arranged in two ways. This is the first one, yeah? series arrangement. And of course, parallel arrangement. Just like for resistors, right? Same with capacitors, series arrangement, parallel arrangement. If you can define series arrangement, right? So let's proceed. Here we go. 
What's his arrangement? You want end to end connection for the capacitor. That's all. all. Right. So this is series arrangement of capacitor. This, this is just the same thing as resistor, but there's a difference. What's the difference? I'll show you shortly. C1, C2, C3. All right. So this is the end to end connection of capacitors as shown below we have this right so we have that c1 n to n to c2 n to n to c3 and this becomes a series arrangement here's what to note here's what to note what we did okay let's proceed let's proceed first for a series arrangement of capacitors, the equivalent capacitance is given by the equivalent capacitance is given by all right, just like this one, two, three in series. I have that one over C is equal to one over C one plus one over C two plus one over C three. This is series arrangement, right? Um, of course, follow the same definition as when we did resistors, resistor, right? For a parallel arrangement of capacitors, it's simply the end to end, end to end connection simply the end-to-end -end connection of capacitor as shown below sorry parallel is what side by side a bit yeah side by side yeah simply the side parallel arrangement of capacitor simply the side by side arrangement of capacitor as shown below uh, this uh, this in card arrangement C1, C2, C3 how the arrangement is the side by side arrangement of capacitors as shown below, so you have this. All right. For parallel arrangement, the equivalent capacitance is given by C equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So observe how this will work. The formula of series for resistance because of the that of what? Parallel of what? Capacitance. Also, the formula for um, parallel of resistance because of the series of what? Capacitance. So don't, don't miss the two, okay? They are similar, but they're actually opposite, like uh, the other way around. So I have this. Alright, one last thing. One last thing.